Hi there, I'm Chuck Rosansky, and I own Mile High Comics, which is the largest comic book store in the world. And lots and lots of people come here, and many notice that we have a second floor. And it's not open to the public, and everybody wonders if that's where all the rare comics and toys are. Nope. Nope, not at all. This is my space. Um, I own the building, and I leased it to Mile High Comics, and I kept the second floor for myself. And I've got 5,000 square feet up here, um, which is going to be eventually entirely devoted to my Pueblo pottery collection. And that's what lots and lots of people get to see when they're downstairs. They look up from the store and they see all these lit showcases up here and everybody and their grandmother wants to come up here. Problem is, I, I just don't have the time. There's no way, I, can, I can't give nickel tours to everybody. So, um, for the first time ever, and, and that's because my pottery in the past was all over at our 56th Avenue warehouse, which wasn't even open to the public at all. And over there, I had 55 showcases filled with potteries and they were so close together that they were touching and there were potteries on the floor and, and, and on the conference table and I, I basically took over the whole damn building. Um, but when we sold that building and paid off all of our company debt in the course of doing that, I had to dismantle all of my displays. I had a friend put everything into boxes and bubble wrap and now, little by little, I've been unwrapping some of my Pueblo pottery pieces. So you know, um, I lost count a long time ago, um, but I'm pretty sure that I'm somewhere north of 9,000 pieces. I may have 10. Um, some of them are little tiny and dinky little pieces, and you know, if you talk to a real pottery collector, they just laugh. Um, but um, some of them are, are large and uh, you know, like uh, right here, this is one of the rarest pieces of Pueblo pottery in the world. Um, this is the only intact Ogi Pogi polychrome from after the Pueblo Revolt of uh, 1680. This was made about 1710 uh, in uh, Northern Gobernador Canyon up in uh, by the Four Corners. Anyway, um, I have pots that are valued from next to nothing up to 50 grand each up here. And uh, the main thing is, is that I have lots and lots of them. And so far, I could be describing almost any museum in America. There's a huge difference with my collection, though, than what you will see anywhere else. And that is that there are f at least 50 museums in America that have really decent collections of old Pueblo pottery, what they consider to be traditional Pueblo pottery. That doesn't impress me much, uh, because a lot of the original Pueblo pottery was made at the command of museum curators who wanted something really pretty to put up on a plinth that had some famous maker's signature on the bottom. And so they would go to Maria or Margaret Tafoya and say, make me this big old thing, because museum directors are like guys everywhere. Everybody wants a bigger one. Okay, and they all want to show off that they're, they're the biggest white boy in the room. Well, this is not that collection. This is the only collection of its kind in the world because this is a collection of what the Pueblo people were making of their own accord, of their own initiative, in order to make some money selling to tourists, usually at least in the 19, uh, 1900 through 1930 period, at the rail stops. So you'd have ladies like these Akama ladies who would literally um, sit by the rail stations. They'd have a blanket and a basket of little potteries that they made. And these are things that they made because they wanted to and also because they were very smart. They figured out what would sell and, and what people were interested in. So you see lots of salt and pepper shakers. You know, the Pueblos didn't do a lot of salt and pepper, I gotta tell you, okay? But they figured out that they could do salt and pepper shakers. Well, <sighs> There's a lot of elitists in this world, people who own galleries or people who own um, museums, and they say, well, that's all tourist crap. Well, hello. It paid the bills. 
the car payment, taking the kid to the doctor, paying for school supplies. This is the art of the people. And this was made by the grandmas. And it gets, when you, when you get into collecting Pueblo pottery, and believe me, when I started collecting Pueblo pottery, I was just another dumb white guy who was just buying it because it was pretty. And uh, at one point I made the transition where I thought, well, this will be a good investment, and if Mile High Comics ever craters, then I'll have something to fall back on. And then, oh hell, let's go in here a little bit. I'll, I'll take you down, we'll, we'll look at some of the cases a little closer in a bit. Um, but I met a man uh, about 22 years ago by the name of Eloy Naranjo. And uh, without ever really articulating it in words, Eloy took me from collecting objects to realizing that what I was looking at was a patrimony of an entire culture. Almost everything that you see in this room is from Eloy's Pueblo, Santa Clara. Um, there's about 2,000 pieces that I've put out so far. Um, they're very well known for their blackware, as is the neighboring Pueblo of San Ildefonso. And, uh, you know, again, here's another example. Um, this is Monica Silva. She was born at Santa Clara, but then eventually married into Santo Domingo. Um, and uh, she, this is an example of her with her little pottery stand at the Pueblo. Um, this is how they made money and, and uh, they really worked it because they would make pottery all winter long and then take it to places like the Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs and sell it there. They would also fire there. They would make, Pueblo, uh, they would make pottery, coil pottery, and fire it at uh, the Garden of the Gods, at uh, the Royal Gorge, Silverton, Durango. They traveled and they worked hard, but if you look at the diversity of the aesthetic, that they created for people to look down their noses at this stuff as being just tourist crap really kind of peeves me because there's some kind of general truths and you, and you can generalizations do not apply to everyone but I'm just going to say it generally um, the Pueblo people view creating pottery as way more than just an endeavor in aesthetic. They believe that they are being given the gift of the flesh of Mother Earth when they find a clay bed that can be used to make pottery. Some of the more devout actually say prayers at the moment when they are digging the clay, then they say prayers while they're forming the individual vessels or objects, then they say prayers when they're firing. They believe that their pottery is far more than just objects. They believe that it only comes to life, and I mean that quite literally, if their heart and their spirit was in a good place at the moment that they made it, and if um, the blessings that they've said are correct. And it, there's a big problem because they fire these in very low temperature in their backyards. And uh, it's kind of hard to describe. Uh, imagine just like the, the grill part of a barbecue grill sitting on top of some rocks um, with pottery stacked on top of there and then covered up in, in cottonwood bark and lit on fire. Um, that is so primitive and it, it is so fraught with possibilities for damage or danger. If even a single piece has too much moisture in it and blows up, it'll break all the other pieces in the firing. Um, so especially large pieces like this, holy hell, they are next to impossible to fire. And then you get into the gigantic Oyas like this one over here that used to be in every uh, Pueblo home. Um, these were unbelievably difficult to fire and only the most, most proficient of the Pueblo people could ever fire those. Um, but the thing is, is that you, you had people working like Van Guterres who pioneered the idea of using different colors of clay that, that so they were clay, it might be gray when you, when you, when you um, dug it from the ground, 
but when you fired it, it might come out as an azure blue or an orange or um, a green, depending on the minerals like manganese or copper that might be inside of that clay. In any event, um, these different types of potteries are reflective of an entire culture and this is just, as I said earlier, um, we got a little bit of Hopi right here and then a couple of large bowls by my friend uh, Diego Romero from Cochiti, who dances Santa Clara, by the way. Um, but this is, for the most part, in this room, um, Santa Clara pottery. And then um, even my paintings uh, and my artwork in here, uh, that's Mateo Romero, Diego's brother, one of the foremost native painters in America, um, and also a huge comic book fan. But anyway, this is just, I mean, it looks like a lot here, um, but this is a microcosm of my collection because the real deal is actually going to be in this next room. This is unbelievably primitive at this point, but we just started getting it laid out. Um, there will be, when this gets completed, a hundred showcases in here, and this will feature the other 6,000 to 7,000 of my pieces, which are all wrapped up right now. And I apologize for that, but I do this all myself. I do it in the evenings. I stay here late at night, and uh, this is sort of my world here. When I'm not off on the road being a drag queen, which is something else that I do, um, and, I, and I do that for charity, um, I got to work at Mile High, I got a farm up in Boulder, and, and my potteries are sort of on the side. But my potteries really make my heart sing, and it makes me so happy that I'm able to put together this one collection in the entire world which will focus exclusively on the art of the people, on the grandmas, the people who didn't sign pots, the people that were selling by the side of the road and were selling at the train station and made sure that their families were fed and clothed. And so this is to me um, something that I'm doing from my heart and it, it really and truly makes me happy. Now. Part of the reason why I wanted to do this video, and I gotta say this right up front, um, this is my private area. I only can allow a few people up a month. I'm gonna be doing tours once a month after my monthly charity auctions. If you wanna get first priority to come up here and see my stuff, you gotta attend one of my charity auctions. That's just the way it is. Support me, I'll support you. Um, the other thing is it is not wheelchair accessible up here. That's why it's not open to the public. I can't. Um, it would cost me $100,000 at least to try and put in an elevator. I haven't got that kind of money. If I had that kind of money, we'd have a floor in here because this is going to have a nice parquet floor, but I'm saving my pennies and working East Colfax and doing everything I got to do to try and make the monies. Um, but I will guarantee you this. Um, if you're patient, if you come to one of my auctions, um, you can come up here, you can get a nickel tour. I'll show you um, some really cool stuff. I have things here. And, and the one thing to remember about Pueblo Pottery, it's all hand built. So every single piece is a unique item. Some creators would replicate the same design over and over again, but many of them did not. And uh, so uh, at least 5,000 of the pieces that I have here, you can see nowhere else in the world. And so this is why quite a few of the Pueblo people actually make a pilgrimage up from New Mexico and Arizona to come visit my collection because it's one that um, they, they can't see their grandma's stuff anywhere else. So they, they gotta come here and I'm so, so happy when they do. Um, my collection, by the way, will never be sold. Um, the final disposition of it is, is still up in the air, but um, it doesn't need to be sold. So it will end up in some way, shape, or form um, back where it will be maintained for the benefit of the Pueblo people. And uh, I just got to figure out how to make that all happen. So this is Chuck Rosansky from Mile High Comics. I thank you very much for listening and, and watching. And I'm sorry this isn't more, but um, if you follow me just one, I mean, this is going to be so cool. I just, uh, I dread cleaning all this glass because, oh my God, it's tedious. Um, but uh, if you look down this way, I mean, we got 
cases and cases and cases. There'll, there'll, there'll be about 100 cases in this room on top of the 29 that are in the other room. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun stuff. So thank you. Have a good day. And try and do something good today, okay? Don't forget, do something good. It'll, be, it'll make your own heart sing.